What's up, YouTube? Jamie the Kid Zero Zero here. Today we are joined by the ever wonderful Michael Broadbent with uh, a bit more of a tried and tested version of Noble Knights Day. Also, hey, heads up to you guys if you are watching this over on Rufio's channel. If you haven't, you should really go and check him out. Um, Michael, how have you been performing today? I haven't been tracking you all day, but how have Noble Knights treated you over the course of six um, rounds? If I don't open a, uh, some one ops. Uh, I'm pretty good. <laughs> <laughs> if, it does, if it's not some sort of hand of like driver and what was the like, you have like another one of nuggets. Yeah, a bunch, sure of, bunch of ones that didn't need to be there. I've, I've, I've done like a bunch of test hands, just dealt five, 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 five. You have like what up to one brick hand out of the entire deck. So. That's kind of insane. I was, I, was, I was pretty unhappy that game. Because <laughs> <laughs> I normally see you on like the late night Edo protesting, so like you're pretty happy that this is your list for the format. Yeah, yeah, yeah got initial D playing in the background. <laughs> Found it. Um, anything else you want to say before we dive into the deck profile? No, I was going to go into Perfect. I'm really looking forward to how this is going to pan out because I know that you've been pouring your heart and soul into this, much right. like Thunder Dragons of Ancient Past. Yeah, exactly, man. When I found a deck I like. Yeah, I never discussed a center point, but anywhere around the shoulder is perfect. So right. middle of the card, middle of the shoulder. Fair play. Perfect. So we'll start off away. very simply. Um, we used to play three gear free, we brought it down to two. Um, there's a reason behind this because um, I don't expect hard to open it. I never want to see one for you searching off the Ogier combo, mm -hmm. and the second one is the follow up. So, like, you add off of Renault or even off of uh, the Soldier if you want. Grind game policy kind of thing. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So, like, this is, I think, is the correct number to play right now. Um, mm -hmm. Open to debate, but I think I'm pretty strong on this. Then the card which got very unexpectedly expensive quite recently, mm -hmm. Renault, um, like, what, like 30, 40 quid or something? For the set? No, for one each. Each? Each now, they've gone up in Good price Lord. insane. But, I mean, it's kind of justified because it's one of the best cards, you know, just summon it off on a Fire Warrior and just get free stuff, and it's a 2 note. It's actually where you want to be. It's so good. Like, uh, yes, a basic card. I feel sorry if you didn't if you didn't pick them up earlier. How much do they start at, like, fives? Uh, I've got mine for, like, 10 each. Back in the day. It was, like, what, 300% value. Well oh, played, sir. Nice. Uh, something I've changed recently, I've, I now have a third Oliver. Mm -hmm. uh, well, one because it's a Noble Knight Extender, it's pretty easy to extend, it's a tuner. Uh, you get like uh, an Ibiru or something, you summon it, so you keep playing, it's so good. Mm. And of course, you can play the little the Mill 4 summon him, which I still think is pretty decent. But yeah, this guy's great. Uh, all the purposes it does is fantastic. I love it. Uh, and now for the one ops, we have the one gear. Um, I disagree with anyone that says this needs to be anything other than one. Okay. Uh, because you need it, you're going to search it out. You don't really want to hard draw it, you'd rather have your searches and uh, less uh, use of the space. Like I said, if you have open two of this, you'll, you'll experience hell that way. <laughs> yeah, no, its prime purpose is just summon it, uh, mill whatever you need it to mill. Sometimes it's an equipped spell, sometimes most of the time it's gear free, then you just pick it up over a no but, uh, behind this guy. And yeah, and of course, Indestructible with card effects is pretty good as well. And two gate events comes up sometimes. Mm -hmm. uh, we started playing uh, the He Who Should Not Be Named recently. Um, very good. Uh, copies level that uh, banishes. I found myself, I play Red Layer. I found myself banishing Red Layer, becoming level 5, and then making like really easy synchros. Mm. I've never resolved the second effect, but if you do actually get to, get to that point, nice man. It must, be, it must feel nice. <laughs> uh, it's pretty nice just knowing you have like some cool stuff coming back and just mm -hmm. two free nothings coming later. Mm -hmm. Pretty good. But yeah, speaking of Red Layer, we play two. Uh, some people play, uh, most people play three or one or something. Mm. I find two is a good number. Uh, Sulfo is my. Uh, is my third red layer. Um, I never want to see more than two in the same hand, mm. so it's kind of a similar mentality to Gear Freed. Um, yeah, this guy covers so much ground because, of, of course, he's Cyber Dragon. But the big, the big plays are like the Tatsunoko play with the Soldier. Yeah, I was going to bring that up. That's an insane interaction. Yeah, yeah, as I was saying, because it, you know, it's all of the Soldier. And then, of course, there's I know you're playing against Dogmatica. They do the Maximus stuff. You put uh, Omega and. Um, Roland Engrave, some of this, making 25 run to stick over window, oh. that kind of stuff. Um, it comes up. And so, yeah, this is good. I think I wouldn't disagree with you if you said, no, nah, uh, we, we play 44 cards here. I would not disagree with you if you said, uh, no, make it 45 and play the third. Uh, I'm mm -hmm. But yeah, I'm, I'm quite happy with two so far. Um, yes, please pray for me. I have one common and one culture. Um, yeah, then we have Connector. We no longer play Sublimation Lines build. And you say, why? It's, it's free search. Well, searching up Arth is irrelevant because you need a monster on the field. But besides that, this is far better because more hand rip and um, everyone flips their shit and dumps everything as soon as some of this. And I'm actually kind of coming around to playing more Dolphin because normal summon Dolphin, it's just funny. Uh, you, you can extend onto it usually. You have loads of Cyber Dragon type effects, right? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So you summon this, you rip the Ash, and all they have, and proceed onwards as then nothing happens. Yeah, no, this is insane. Um, these make um, the decks so much better. Cool. 
Um, as they do every deck, they they can play it, be played in. And then we have the new card, or newish Fire Flame Lady. It's just a war extender that you want it to be. Um, you think like that's what we use it for, but no, you do, you do usually use the second effect sometimes. Say like um, you need the Gemba, which is level two warrior two eight, out of your hand. Mm. You can then just mill one, summon this, summon it from that hand. So there are lots of like, ways you can pivot in this deck. You can accelerate out the dolphin as well, right? Uh, yes, you can. We also, uh, also, speaking of Gemba. Um, do not read anything below Warrior Tuna. That is, that, is, that is completely irrelevant. We just want this card for um, extremely shallow concerns. Yeah. It's a level yeah. two Fire Warrior Tuna. Yeah. That's literally it. You like, summed it into me, and I was like, I'm pretty sure that's a six summer, but I'm gonna let it slide. <laughs> exactly, man. It's great. Very I mean, you can play stuff like uh, other Warrior Tuna. Right, it just needs to be level two. Yeah. But this guy is a Fire Warrior, so mm. that comes up because for like Renault and whatnot. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah, no, this guy is insane. Uh, the level two combo is just as good as the. Uh, level four combo. It doesn't okay. really matter what you go for. Mm -hmm. And then we have the card. Uh, you don't you don't want to see this card in your hand, but you can find ways to summon it. Um, if you go with the mill four, uh, you can summon him uh, just from your hand. From a power can doesn't change anything. Uh, but if you can only mill two, uh, there is a way which you can put him back with a mega and then summon him back out again. Cool. Which is quite funky. Uh, Jet Synchron found one finally. Yes, we got it. It's great. And I come around. Uh, this is better than Despot just because of how versatile it is. But Despot is great because it's free, but mm. this is, is so much more versatile and since we play a Mega on this build, yes, you can put it back and use it again, which is very, very useful. And most of your combos are like one or two cards anyway, so really the fuel for the Jet Synchron is pretty free. Yeah, and also yeah. by the time you talk about him, you've usually got Divine Sword and Graves. So of course, free. yeah. <laughs> Super free. It's like glob, <laughs> uh, And then this card, or well, these cards, this card, this. Yeah, um, problem yeah. area. Yeah, yeah. Um, I've never been a big fan of Gamma. I don't really care. I, I mean, at the moment, the impact is very nice. You know, yeah, negating yeah, Alistair. Yeah. Oh, look, you can't touch your extra deck and you can't summon mm -hmm. Dramatic. That's pretty good. Yeah. And just destroying it. And uh, uh, it's a new term, uh, black, bad player bait. If anyone tries to unironically, like, um, well, Ash, your rotor, you just punish them, stop them, and then you just make a Mega and heat another card. But that's not the main purpose. Like, that isn't like the, the main purpose you think I'm playing this, you know, it's a hand trap, it's like one of the best like high impact hand traps. That's not why we're playing it. We're playing it for a card which we'll discuss later. But yeah, the game is alright and um, it does the job sometimes. I just wish it was. I think my hand a bit more than this bastard. Yeah, understandably. Uh, anyway, so non spells. I'm just going to keep piling these anyway. Yeah, the so, mountain. We're going to go over the mountain. So yeah, heritage, free rotor. The yeah. only kind of bad thing is hard one, hard one's turn doesn't matter. Search, search where you need to find. Pretty simple. Mm -hmm. And playing a Stolfo um, makes it cut a little bit better because you, know, you have uh, access to an actual extender that you don't need I feel like uh, anything from hand before. And it's, it comes up as really mm -hmm. nice. And of course, I play um, R3 to still, and it's like, hey, I can play against Subterra now. Nice cool. one. <laughs> anyway, so next one is Durindal. Uh, it is a search card, and it's very good. There's not really much more you need to say about it. Like you want to play as many sets as you can. There you go, it's sorted. It seems rather understated, but it just gets you where you need to be. I mean, how, how did it take us this long to realize we need an Infernoble and an Equip spell in one uh, search? There you go. How long did it take them to figure that out? <laughs> Anyways, on to the, the Equips. This card is perhaps the single reason why you should play this deck over Rock. Um, because you get Hand Scan, and I hear ripping cards out of hand is pretty good. Um, it is, because you, you can, well, I've only been able to achieve popping this like twice, but apparently you can pop it three times. Um, but yeah, no, this card's insane, and, and it's the single reason why you should play this deck over um, Rock. Just because hand scan is so good, you can take out the card or plan accordingly. Of course. It's super, super good. Uh, then you have a quick spell, it's divine. If it's free, if you play a soul, you can play this because it's free. Mm. Uh, Living Fossil, this card has is actually much more busted in this deck than you'd think. Uh, well, first of all, you can pick it up with Renault, like dummy easy, you know, just add premature barrier to your hand if that oh, yeah, yeah, triggers you immediately. I don't know what's going on. Uh, and of course, second thing is that was quite funny. This deck play course plays Herald like everything else at the moment. Uh, turns out, if you summon back Herald, equipped with this, you can still negate stuff. Because it's only a negate is almost equipped, and when it tributes, it's no longer equipped. Oh, so it's no longer covered by it. That's so good. <laughs> so, yes, and so you, you might be able to, once again, BPP, bad player bait. Anyways, um, this you do you not keep need... saying bad player bait on everything that I negated against. Don't <laughs> worry, <laughs> no, right. I didn't. I didn't say greed and purpose. <laughs> um, this card you don't need to play. This card can be like a third red layer or whatever. This is my personal preference mm -hmm. because I like to have something to be able to pop back grow. Yeah, uh, and it makes me feel more comfortable. And of course, it's the fifth equip, which those people are kind of being like, yeah, maybe you need the fifth equip. Mm -hmm. So this can be autonomous if you need it to be something else real. Don't play Joyous. Joyous is not that good. I've come. I've changed yeah. my mind. Joyous is just bad. For the games that I saw today, like this is coming pretty clutch against the rogue matchups that you're gonna face at a local yeah. scene. Yeah, and, and of course we live in the EU, my man. So like over here, we like our traps and our trap cards. Mm -hmm. So you need to um, just uh, destroy that and get out of the way and just play normally. 
I think this is necessary in Europe. In America, everyone's like, just, I want to play Hero and just fall to the wall. So you probably don't need to play this if you're in like America. But in the EU, you need to play this, I think. Makes sense. Exactly. And then the money card. Uh, I mean, it's, I mean, if you can't afford this, play called by, called by, you don't need to play. Um, because you can usually play through stuff. But yeah, this card's insane. They hand trap you once. You take something out or you draw two and you have a pretty good chance of drawing to an extender or if you already have it, you just eat the other hand trap and then just eat them. So I think you drew the single worst hand you could ever draw against me and this brought you back in. Yes. Like it was insane how yeah, quickly yeah. that got you back in. Three band cards, choose between them, pretty cool. Mm -hmm. Yeah, of course, I understand it's quite expensive. Right. So yeah, 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 of course. Cool buys. What, one quid is yeah. like it's 50, a 90, 50 plus. Yeah, it's a 99th percent card, but like if you can, do. Definitely. All right, so this is the reason I like to play Gamma. And you say, Michael, what's this card doing here? Said, Dude, yeah, you can help Pompo. No, 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 no. Okay, so it's a picture scenario. You summon a soul day and then negate the, the mill effect. Shit, what do I do? Uh, well, you just need access to a level 2 tuner, do you? So there you go, level okay. 2 tuner, and you just bypass, this, bypass impermanence and play normally. Ooh. And it's pretty good, and that's the reason. This is what convinced me to play it. Um, and of course, say you do get into Beerud and then you just decide, okay, I can still help, so I'll do stuff from that. There you go. Uh, it's like the, there was, there's like an old English story, I can't remember the name of. Uh, we can't play around it, uh, Nibiru, we can't play under Nibiru, we'll play through Nibiru, so we'll do that. And it still end on like good stuff, like I think ending on Charles is better than um, Boral uh, Herald, so debate me. And then this card, um, we play Warriors in this deck, enough said. Um, and then this card, um, this used to be a free call by, but then I've kind of come around to it. Um, I feel a lot more safe for playing free relevant hand traps, and being able to stop uh, Utopic Zexal is pretty good, so I hear. Uh, well, that's my perspective anyway, so yeah. that's the main deck. 44 cards, I think going over 40 is, is better than playing under 40 because one low chance uh, brick and it's better on the test handing, literally like testing yourself, you'll, mm. you'll brick a whole lot less if you play over 40. So it's like Lights one when we played that because it's just got so many starters, right? Mm. I also, I, I've never seen any 60 card lists discussed seriously, so think that what you will. Um, so, there we go. okay, so into the extra deck. I mean, enough said, broke card, needs to get banned eventually, and it's not happened yet, so there you go, nice one. Mm -hmm. um, so, next one, oh, yeah, Alincross, part of the combo, essential, there you go, so another card which probably shouldn't exist. Yeah. Uh, how, probably, I'm just going to keep saying the same thing, so I'm just not going to say anymore, but yeah, like, um, we don't know how long this is going to keep, uh, but yeah, that's the card. You're already playing three Hulks anyway, so yeah. <laughs> like, you're good. Exactly, and we have this, combo. Uh, this, I think still playing this is good, especially with uh, Astolfo. Mm -hmm. um, it's, the it's like the, the third follow-up is pretty good, and of course pop stuff is usually pretty good, so yeah. It's, it's good. I, I, I would play this, but you can change it for like other stuff, no matter what you want. Uh, this card's really good. Uh, mill off of Maximus, equipped to red layer, that combo, and of course, just everything with the card's pretty good. Yeah. Synchro Tuner, insane. Uh, Marcha, probably gonna get banned. Tassinoko. Uh, this is, uh, the combo is just, um, you just summon Gemba, get your tokens off of uh, Linkross. Uh, one, you make Marcha bring back Gamba. Now you have a level one tuna, one tuna and level two tuna. Make this, and then because you added a red layer off of uh, Isolde, you just use a red layer. Then you have an early ball or a, uh, a mega if you need to put the uh, O line back. So yeah, this is this is worth. I haven't found a reason why you shouldn't play this so far. Um, but yeah, play it's really good. Really surprised me. I really liked it. Yeah, it's really it's really cool. Especially since it's all all, mm. all within Isolde. Herald, it's this format. Play Herald. Um, Coral. Um, once again, you don't need to play this, you probably get away with playing like Formula Synchron. Mm -hmm. I think this is worth because of its pop effect, and like usually at this point you have Phoenix Play, so it's a free pop. Yes. And of course the draw is pretty nice, but Formula does that as well. But I think the pop is necessary, and of course you can summon this off of Hulk in that really rare scenario and draw a card. So mm -hmm. Think of that what you will. Yeah, very true. Yeah, super good. Uh, Omega, this card is, is uh, use it for almost all purposes. Put back a banished Jet Synchron, uh, Yeet Hand, the the purpose you find yourself using it most for is you, I know, at this point you put a Jet Synchron or access to a level 1 and you just make Charles with it and then you can disturb the graveyard and um, disturbing the graveyard is pretty good at the moment so I hear because of like, you know, like Eldlick and um, uh, invoked Dragmail, uh, you know, get the shit old stuff. It's very good, it's very versatile and you can indeed put your own stuff back and that helps occasionally. But yeah, no, worth playing. Savage, this format. Um, uh, in for Noble Knight Emperor Charles, this card is amazing. Um, I think, yeah, he's better summoning than this in uh, Herald because hand scan and he can get you free shit if you do survive. Uh, he's so good, and of course, Astolfo can bring him back later if like, you survive that long. Yeah. And it's usually pretty impactful. Hasn't happened yet, but it's just in theory. And the last card is the Trish because it's super impactful. You can play Trish. Um, I think the moment you take it out, you'll miss it. 
and that's been true of a few people who I've seen do deck profiles. Makes so sense. the truth is very worth playing. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And then we just have a bunch of tokens. Well. Yeah, yeah, completely, because there's so many different co tokens that the whole system can pump out, right? Yeah, exactly. There's two different types, yeah, but it yeah. keeps it going. And then the sideboard I am playing so far. How are you feeling about the side? Like, you feel pretty practiced on it? Yeah, it's pretty good. I think, like, uh, there's, like, two cards I'm missing on that. Um, maybe, like, I could change one, maybe, like, one card. Everything else seems to be pretty solid so cool. far. So, like, this is just, yes. well, it's the one-off. Play it's pretty good. Uh -huh. So here, twenty six Cyber Dragon. Um, I actually can't remember what it, what luxury it was to play free, but there we are. Um, yeah, fantastic card. Uh, the Dark Ruler because if you draw this against decks, and you usually win. And it's usually just this, and then oh, can I extend and combo? Nice, I usually can. Um, but yeah, the issue with this card um, is that the, in the mirror match, if you can't stop them, you have to top it, and in this deck, it's probably not going to happen. So the mirror match can be quite weird. But yeah, no, it's definitely still worth playing. Uh, Lightning Storm because I, I I can afford them. Um, it's, it's, lightning, it's Lightning Storm really. It's just it's like you like the main part is, is like it's a heavy storm like, against back row decks. So I, you don't really want to use it against front row because everyone's super used to playing Boral in defense. Absolutely. And whatnot. So it's mainly just like a back row card. Uh, evenly, because Dogmatica has a very few outs to this, except for keeping the trap in hand, that's mm. super not recommended. The yeah, no, uh, plus again, just generic, uh, big board whites. I like this deck, because you can side in board whites, and you can still combo off pretty well. Um, this is a card up for debate, um, it hasn't really come up, but hey, spell decks, they still, they're still a thing, and say like, uh, stopping the deer and the magical meltdown on that one deck and then like you know, some people still like play striker. There are a lot of really, uh, um, what's the word? Um, adamant European players that will not put down striker and this will get you there. Yeah. Uh, well, they haven't had to pay for Yu-Gi-Oh for like three years, no. so I, I can't blame them. It's never ending. They're just, just going to find whatever way they can do. Still play, living in the eternal striker. format. Exactly. Uh, this, um, the main, the big theory is, well, of course, you know, st help get you through guys, all that, all that jazz. But mm. I side this in going first sometimes because, like, let's say if I draw this and they imperm, then I can stop the imperm. Yes. And that is that hasn't happened yet, but hey, it's uh, it's something you can do. But yeah, just generic red reboot. It's the fourth call by the grave kind of thing. Yeah, yeah, kind of definitely. Mm -hmm. And then uh, this is meant to be free a pointer, uh, but I didn't, I don't have to. I'm gonna try, ah. I'm gonna try to pick up that because Ooh. it's a card which. Should really just be a one or ban, but it's, yeah. it's not there yet. It's just like the end of this thing. Again, more hand scanning, like you were saying before. Yeah, exactly. You usually side out like impermanence if you're going first, Ooh. and uh, usually one something else. So like, and you can find, kind of throw in like it's uh, free space, like imperial order kind of thing. So if you draw into it, as I did against uh, uh, Adamant's it can help a lot. Mm. So yeah, I mean, this could also just be like scolding or just free judgment, just like the extra negate goes so far. Especially if you can theoretically negate the top deck Mystic Mine, which has happened, it's massively frustrating when you, of course, put that much effort into board, then like, I know what your hand is. Mm -hmm. Negate everything else I know. Mystic Mine. Uh, I guess I'd pick up my deck. <laughs> um, but yeah, no, it comes up and it's super good and the pointer is the preferable one, but it's mm -hmm. not essential. No, completely. Well, that looks like it brings us to about the end of the list. Did you have any kind of final commentary or final shout outs you wanted to give before we close this all out? Ah, uh, shout out. No, say, so, well, the commentary on the deck, I think the deck is uh, very good. It's in a very good place right now. I think it's the best deck by far. If you learn how to play it, there is a considerable learning curve because you need to learn how to combo when you open certain bricks. That's the main thing. Mm -hmm. If it was just recite combo, it'd be super easy. But no, you've got to learn to play like Mill 2 and if you have um, O9 in hand, etc., that kind of thing. So it's, it's a learning cool. curve, but it's super rewarding. And everyone always rage quits when you combo on them <laughs> and, and take away their dark rule no more. It's always happy. But no, shout outs to, I guess, uh, Rufio and uh, Jane the Kid. Thank you very much. It's, uh, Thank it's you pleasure. so much for your time. Well, start to close us out. Thank you guys for watching. Hope you have all enjoyed. If you have, please leave a like. Subscribe if you are new here. If you're on Jamie the Kid 00, please feel free to hop, over, hop on over to Rufio's channel. Check him out. And hey, guys, if you're watching on Rufio's channel, I'd love if you came and checked out my content as well. If you've got any thoughts, please leave, please leave them in the comment section down below. I know you're normally quite keen to engage in a little bit of debate. Uh, so you'll probably catch Michael in the comment section. What's up? Hope you all enjoyed, and we will see you guys very soon with some more Yu Gi Oh! related content. Peace out. Bye bye. This content is brought to you in association with my buddies over at Jam Jam Cards UK. You can find the links to the eBay store and the Facebook page in the description.